How did you become Muslim? Well, you want me to tell you? It's yes. probably yeah. going to be a while. Yes, it'll be a while. But, all right. Well, you can probably translate for all later. Yeah. Um, I, I came to Australia when I was in uh, 1990. Um, both my parents, they're pretty much Buddhist, but uh, they're not really practicing. They pretty much only practice when it's a special occasion. So I grew up in an area called Bankstown. There's a lot of Muslims there, mostly Middle Eastern, Lebanese. So even when I went to high school, I still, I didn't hang around with Asians that much. I just hanged around with uh, the Lebanese people. So all my friends, they were pretty much all Arabs or Muslims. Um, so one day when I was in year 12, you know, all my Muslim mates, all I understand from them was during Ramadan, they fast, and that's pretty much about it. I've never seen them pray, I've never seen them do anything else. So we went on a little holiday to the Gold Coast, went out partying, and came back early one morning, and would have been, we probably came back at two o'clock. And then um, at around four o'clock, all I heard them do, say was the Adan was calling in the background. I didn't know what it was, so I thought, oh, geez, guys, you know, what are you doing? This is freaking crazy. It's four o'clock in the morning, you know, you're waking me, you're waking me up. And they're like, it's all right, John, go back to sleep. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I can't go back to sleep, you know, what are you doing? It's really four o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know, what's this crazy thing you're saying? He goes, well, just sit to the side and I'll show you later. So there, I'm seeing, you know, splash water on their face, washing themselves up. And I was thinking, geez, you know, it's pretty extreme at four o'clock in the morning. And then they start to pray, and uh, afterwards, I asked them, I was like, so, uh, what's this all about, guys, you know? He goes, oh, we are praying. I was like, well, you pray at four o'clock in the morning, don't you just pray on Sundays? Or don't you just pray once a week? He goes, no, we pray five times a day. I was like, but I've never seen you pray. He goes, yeah, because we, you know, I wasn't really practicing, so we just started, and sometimes when we pray, we usually just tell you, you know, I'm going to my room to get something, or I'm going out to do something, or I'll be back in five minutes, and that's when we pray. I was like, why would you have to pray at four in the morning, you know? Well, couldn't you just, couldn't you combine them? And they go, oh, don't worry about it. And they go, yeah, okay, never mind. And then the next day, we went out to have some dinner, and um, they were all hungry. I ordered some food, I ordered them some steaks and that. So they're like, yeah, okay, beautiful. And when the food was there, they're like, uh, I can't really eat. I was like, what do you mean? He goes, uh, the food's not halal. I was like, what the hell's halal? He goes, it's food's food, man. Just eat the bloody thing. He goes, I already paid for it. It's almost like 90 bucks. He goes, oh, no, we only eat things that's halal. And I was like, man, it's crazy, man. We used to go out and we used to eat like there's no tomorrow. But now you're telling me all about this halal stuff. Are we on holidays or what? So he goes, oh no, you know, halal's a special way that meat's got to be prepared. And I was thinking, man, you guys are crazy, you know, you guys are a bit extreme, you guys change all of a sudden. We're supposed to be on holidays. And then when we came back from holidays, one of my mates said to me, so, um, who do you believe in, John? Like, what God do you believe in? I go, I don't really believe in any God, you know. You live, you have kids, and you die, and the cycle just repeats itself. He goes, but uh, how do you know if you've never actually um, followed up? I go, well, that's pretty true. I go, so how do I know your God's the right God? He goes, well, before you go to sleep, just say, oh God, whoever you are, you know, you could be Muhammad, <coughs> Buddha, Krishna, or whatever God you believe in. If there is a true God out there, show me a sign. I was like, yeah, okay, that sounds pretty reasonable. I am interested. Why not? So, before I went to sleep, instead of going to sleep, you know, and then saying a prayer or asking, you know, God, show me a sign, I've said to myself, you know what, if I was actually sincere in trying to find a God, why don't I set my alarm clock at two or three in the morning when everybody else is asleep? That way, I'll be more sincere instead of, you know, going to sleep at nine o'clock and saying a little prayer saying, you know, oh God, help me and show me a sign. Let's make it at three o'clock when everybody's asleep. And that way, you know, it actually forces me to wake up. So I wrote this little essay on, you know, oh God, show me a sign. If you're really out there, show me a sign. 
I'm seriously trying to look for you, so you know, give me some hints or lead me to the straight path. So I used to set my alarm on at three o'clock, and instead of just waking up, I remember my Muslim mates that were making the do, but I didn't know what it was. So I used to wake up, splash a little bit of water on my face, so I'm alert and wash my hands, and then uh, I'll get that, I'll get out my sheet of paper, which was probably half a page long, and I was starting to read it. And then uh, I said, yeah, okay, you know, if you're out there, show me a sign. I did that for probably a month, and pretty much nothing happened. So I was like, oh, you know what, religion's bloody rubbish, you know. And my Muslim mate used to go, so John, did you find anything? Yeah. No, not really. So then, um, continued back in my old ways, you know, went drinking, went out with friends, went clubbing. And uh, I remember, I don't know, obviously you guys don't have it here, but in Australia, they're called Jehovah Witnesses. They're Christian missionaries. They're actually very active. They usually get old people, very kind, friendly people, knocking on your door, and you really can't say no to them because they're very gentle. They used to knock on the door, and they used to give out these two booklets. It's called um, The Watchtower, and it pretty much gives you all information about Christianity, and they'll share stories of life experiences in it. So they've been coming around my house for four years. They come pretty much every fortnight. So this one time on Sunday, he, um, I get, after I went clubbing, I came back real early in the morning, I get this really hard knock on the door. It was probably around eight or nine o'clock in the morning, real early for a Sunday. And I was thinking, you know, I'll just ignore it. And then the knock got harder and they kept on knocking. And I was thinking, oh shit, it's probably one of my family members. I better go open up the door and uh, see who it is. And when I opened up the door, it was these two elderly gentlemen they go, oh, you know, oh, hi, you know, we're Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, we're here to give you the good news. And I looked at them, I was like, oh, shit, you know, I'm dead tired, I'm probably hungover, half drunk. I want to be nice to them. I go to them, well, listen, guys, you've been coming here for almost four years. I don't want to be rude, but, you know, you're giving me the same stuff every fortnight. What would it take for you to never come back to my house again? Because every time they come in, I don't like to have a chat with them because they always tell me about religion, which I wasn't really interested. I usually just give them two dollars, they give me two books, and those two books I'll chuck it right next to the toilet bowl next to me, so whenever I go to the toilet, if I haven't got any newspaper, or I've got my phone, that's when I'll actually read these religious scriptures. And most of the times it comes in one ear and comes straight out the other. I go, so what did it take for you guys never to come back again? He goes, well, let us come in, we'll have a chat. So they came in. Had a little chat, I go, so they were telling me all about Christianity. I told them, well, aren't you guys a little bit biased? Because obviously you come from a Christianity background. All you're gonna tell me about is pretty much Christianity. Why don't you tell me something about Islam, Judaism, Buddhism, or Hinduism? And they couldn't really tell me much, or they could only tell me the really, really basic. Obviously they had full knowledge of Christianity, what they're preaching, but with the other religion, they had no idea. So I told them, okay, isn't that a bit biased, you know, you know, you're here to teach the God's word, but you don't even know the other scriptures. How do you know that your religion's right? Or how do you know if your religion's wrong and theirs right? He goes, you know, it's pretty, I like the way you think. How about I come back next week and I'll give you a book that has the five major religion. That way you can make up your own mind. So true to their words, they came back next week, the week after, and they gave me a book probably that thick and it contained the uh, five religions. So I've read them all, read the whole book and I thought, you know what, it's probably a little bit of a bias here because they're probably going to be talking more about Christianity and they're going to bag out the rest of the religion. So I read the part on Islam and then I passed it on to my Muslim mate. I go, here, have a read of this part and see if it's actually correct. So he had a read of it and he goes, no mate, whatever's the part there in Islam, that's correct. Okay. <coughs> Read the Buddhist bit. Didn't really appeal to me because Buddha, he was agnostic, which means he doesn't really believe in God or he didn't claim that God exists or if he didn't. Hinduism, they do believe in one God, but then they've got all these demigods and you know they worship the elephants, the cows and all that. They use it as the people in, you know, I think they're called intermediaries. 
So that really didn't appeal to me. I read the uh, Torah bit. I thought, yeah, you know, that pretty much makes sense. The Christianity bit and Islam, I noticed that they're pretty much all similar, that, you know, there's only one religion there. So I was thinking, yeah, okay. So, anyway, after that, I was reading it through. Didn't really click on to me that much. And uh, I was working at the dry clean shop one day, which was my family business. And there was this uh, Indian fortune teller. He came by that day. And we were, weren't busy at all, right? And he comes by and he goes, oh, excuse me, sir, I see good things in you. You know, let me tell, let me tell you your future. And I was thinking, oh, what rubbish, man. You know, I'm not really keen on fortune telling, but I've got nothing else to do. So yeah, why not? So he traced my hand and he written all this stuff. And then he goes to me, you know what? You're gonna be very rich, but money's not gonna be Money's not going to matter that much. I was like, what a load of crap. Obviously, he's going to tell me that I'm rich. Then he goes, you're going to live a very long life. And I was like, yeah, obviously, you're going to tell me that. He goes, you're going to have all your best friends. Uh, they don't love you as much, and they're all going to turn their back on you one day. It'll be very soon. I was like, I'm serious? Like... All my friends, I get along with them beautifully, you know. Everybody likes me, I like them. I'll do whatever for them and they'll do whatever for me. Mm. And then he goes to me, you're gonna be very religious. And when he said that, I pretty much laughed at him. I was like, me, very religious? I was like, oh, what a load of crap. He goes, no, I'm telling you, I can see it in you, you're a very religious man. I was like, no, nah, man, you probably got, you know what, all the others I can probably believe, but the religion bit, I go, nah, I go, anyway, I gave them five bucks afterwards, and um, my mate, my, my mate Muhammad, he goes to me, and say, John, have you still been saying those prayers? I go, yeah, man, but uh, nothing's happening. He goes, just keep on doing it, man. Don't give up. Eventually, you'll get a sign. So I remember one night, um, I remember I had this dream that... Uh, the setting was like the desert in the background and uh, I was pretty much in the subdued position and as I was looking up I see this guy is bare feet, he had the white white robe on and as I looked up to him higher and higher my heart was trembling you know like I've done something wrong or heaps of adrenaline and I saw that he had a massive beard, long face, pointy nose I wouldn't say he was tall, he'd probably be probably around 180, 185, black hair. And uh, when I looked into his, as I was looking up, in the background was the sun, and it was super bright, you know. We look at the sun now and we'll be glaring, but this was super bright. And when I saw his face, my heart trembled even more, and I got in the subdued position, and I started saying, Alakwa, Alakwa, and I woke up crying. And then I was like, Oh shit, John, you know, that's the sign that you've been asking for, you know. So I told my mate Muhammad about it. He goes, you know what, John, you know, there's a lot of Muslims out there that ask for these signs. And, you know, with you, you know, you ask for the sign, God's actually showed you it. How silly would you be on the day of judgment, you know, if you say that, you know, there's no God and there was that clear sign for you. So I said, uh, you know what, and see, with you as well, You've read all the five religions, you know what's common sense, you know, so what's stopping you? I was like, you know, what? Well, it would be very silly with all the knowledge that I've got. It's not like I've gone blind faith and choose a religion. So, you know, from a person who didn't really believe anything and reading these five religions to actually make up your mind and to choose one, I go, it would be very silly. So, I go, yeah, okay, babe, I'll choose Islam, but then, you know, from what I was doing to, you know, praying five times a day and, you know, uh, doing the stuff that I used to do, it'd be a bit hard, so I gradually built up my faith and then gradually got into it. And um, I remember with my mum, I remember, I didn't tell my parents this, I used to, you know, pray when they weren't looking and all that. I remember with my parents, one day I was very hungry and I told them, Mum, can you make me something to eat? And she goes, what do you want? I go, oh, just make me anything, I'm starving. She goes, okay, um, I'll make you your favourite meal, just watch some TV. 
and it'll be ready in around 20 minutes. So yeah. I'm telling her, come on, mom, let's hurry up. I'm starving. She goes, yeah, yeah, no worries. It's coming. So 20 minutes later, she puts in this dish in front of me, and I was starving too. I told her I was starving for the last 20 minutes, and it was a pork dish. And uh, it was my favorite pork dish too. It was, uh, it was a Vietnamese um, rice rolls, anyway. I looked at her, I was like, I'm not hungry no more, mum. She goes, what do you mean you're not hungry? You told me you're starving for the last 20 minutes. She goes, yeah, I've lost my appetite. She goes, no, you haven't. What's wrong? There's something wrong here. She goes, uh, I got a, I'm a Muslim, mum. You know, I don't eat this stuff no more. She goes, what's a Muslim? She goes, you know, those Arabs, their gods they worship. He goes, what, the religion of the Alibabas? You know, she didn't really know any better. I was like, yeah, them. She goes, well, you can't be a Muslim. You know, our whole family, we've been Buddhists, you know. Your dad's been a Buddhist, your grandfather's a Buddhist, and, you know, your whole family's a Buddhist. You know, being a Muslim, it's almost unheard of. She goes, out of all religion, why would you want to, you know, be a Muslim? You know, look what's happening around the world. These people are crazy, you know, they're bloody killing themselves, blowing themselves up. The women's are oppressed, you know, why would you do this stuff to yourself? I was like, no, it's not like that, mum. She goes, listen, I know you've been hanging around with the Arabs a fair bit. I think you're probably a little bit brainwashed. So why don't I give you some books on <laughs> Buddhism? That way you can read about it so you know your religion of your forefathers. Because obviously, you know, I think that you're a bit brainwashed and you've just jumped the gun and just pick Islam because all your friends are in there. You don't know any better. And I go, yeah, okay, we'll do that then. So that weekend, she went to Wollongong, which is probably a good 300 k's, 250, 300 k's from our house. It's Australia's largest temple over there. And she came back with five, uh, five books on Buddhism. Each was probably around that big. So she gave it to me and she goes, listen, before you pick anything, read these books first and then you can make up your mind. So I did actually read all those books after I finished it in a couple of months time. I go to mum one day, I go, while I was at the shop, I go, mum, dad, I'm going to ask you five questions on Buddhism and if you can answer those five questions, I'll leave Islam and I'll come back to Buddhism. Okay, she goes, yeah, okay, fire away. I go, that, I go, uh, Buddha, is he a male or female? He goes, oh, he's a male. I go, okay, no worries. That altar of that statue over there, that's a female statue. What's that? She goes, oh, that's Buddha. I go, that statue there, is that a male or female? She goes, it's female. I go, well, and you said it was Buddha, right? Yeah. But you just told me Buddha was a male, so Buddha can't be male. I mean, Buddha can't be female. She goes, um, um, he goes it can be both. I go, no, it can't, mum. You know? It's either male or female, and you clearly know that it's male. So why don't you smash up that statue or replace it? She goes, oh, don't be silly. I go, okay, regardless of that, don't worry about it. Another thing, that statue over there in the altar, it's got that big fat guy. You know? I go, who's that? She goes, I go, well, that's not Buddha, is it? No. He goes, well, who is it? She goes, um, uh, I don't know. I go, well, if that's not Buddha, then why don't you smash that or throw it away? She goes, oh, don't be silly. I go, mum, that's just a Chinese philosopher, you know. She goes, okay, well, regardless of that. And uh, next to him, there's a guy with the long beard and he's got the hat and he's holding a cipher. I go, who's that? I go, well, that's not Buddha, is it? He goes, no. I go, well, who is it? She goes, I don't know. I told this to my dad as well. He goes, I don't know. He goes, well, that's Confucius. He's a Chinese philosopher. You know he's got definitely nothing to do with Buddhism, so why don't you smash that up? You know, it's not relevant. I go, okay, well, regardless, you know, they are great people. They've got, you know, good philosophy, good way of life. Don't worry about that. I go, what about the cat there? And she goes... Well, that's not Buddha, and you know, Buddha said never to worship animals or anything like that. Now you're worshiping animals. I go, what's that there for? She goes, oh, that's for good luck. I go, mum, it's just an animal, you know. You know, it's domesticated. If we do not feed the animal and we can control these animals, then why would you worship something where we can actually tame it? She goes, um, um. I go, okay, don't worry about that. 
what about the horse? And all these altar here, they've got, you know, all these, you know, animals and statues over there. And the same with the horse, he goes, oh, that's pretty much just for good luck. They'll go, yeah, you know, we pretty much tame it, we ride it, and do whatever we want to it. I go, look, mum, isn't it a bit silly that you've been, how old are you, you know, you're almost 50. How long have you been worshipping Buddha for, for all these gods? Because you've been worshipping for at least 40 years, you're just following your forefathers, and your forefathers after that, without ever questioning any of these, you know, ideologies or any idea. And here, your son, you give me, you know, these books, and within three months, I'm telling you that what you're doing is wrong. Why don't you listen? Or why don't you read? I go, isn't that a bit silly? You've gone blind faith, you know, common sense doesn't even prevail. <coughs> I go, how silly are you, you know? It's just because, you know, your fathers and your mothers did that, you do not have to follow their footsteps. Because, you know, yeah. if it's wrong, then it's wrong, you know, you can't really change that. And then they go, oh, you know, it's pretty, they couldn't really say nothing because they knew that I pretty much had them. Mm. And then I go to them, they go, okay, well, let me ask you five questions, a couple of questions on Islam. So they pretty much asked me all those questions about Islam. I pretty much answered all of them and they didn't have any doubts. And then uh, I go, listen, mum, ever since I've converted to Islam, would you say I've been a much better person than I was before? She goes, yes. I go, so what seems to be the problem then? And she goes, okay, fair enough. I still talk to them now, but they're never interested. And um, even when I go back, so that was my parents, so I pretty much dealt with them. Also, they go, in the end, they always go, oh, you know what? Don't worry about religion. I think it's rubbish, you know. We just believe in karma, you know. Something good, I do something good, good happens to me. I do something bad, bad things happen to me. I go, okay. The reason behind that, right, if you say that if you do something good, good will happen to you, and if you do something bad, bad will happen to you, then there must be a record keeper, right? Somebody must say, you know, John has just donated to the musket a thousand dollars. Therefore, I don't know, if John plays lotto or, you know, whatever, there'll be somebody saying, no, well, you know, remember this day John has donated X amount, you know, let good come to him. Or if John has stolen something or done something wrong, let something bad come to him. Therefore, if there's a record keeper, then there must be somebody that's really superior up there to keep records. I go, would you agree with that, Mum? She goes, yeah. I go, see, so karma, see, the law of karma doesn't really exist then, right? Because if there's a record keeper, then there must be somebody superior. We call him, you know, Allah, or you call him Jehovah, or whatever. You can't just say, you know, there's nobody there. And uh, with the Vietnamese tradition is, they do, I don't know where they got the idea is, is there's heaven and hell as well. But then I told them, well, with Buddhism, you know, Buddha didn't say there was heaven or hell, he just said there's no nirvana. And uh, usually with Vietnamese, they do ancestral worship. So, you know, if my father passed away, I would go and I would get like gold bars that's made out of paper mache, right? Or some of these things, they come in houses, money, Mercedes or whatever. So they believe that when you burn these, it gets passed on to the afterlife, right? So if I burn, you know, a couple of hundred thousands gold bar, a house, new clothing, they believe that that goes to the hereafter. I go, well, mum, if you believe in that, the, your concept of Buddhism, if you believe in, you know, life after death, or there's a paradise and there's hell, then you're pretty much going towards Islam, Judaism, and Christianity. So I've been trying to tell them all this, and uh, they still, you know, they haven't got an answer for it, no matter, you know, sometimes common sense doesn't prevail. And then going back to my friends, uh, when I went, met up with some of my friends, they go, oh, you know, let's go out, uh, let's go out clubbing, or let's go out, and let's go out drinking. And I was like, you know what, I don't really do that anymore. He goes, what do you mean? He goes, oh, I'm a Muslim now. And these guys, as soon as they heard that I was Muslim, Oh, you know, I was like the worst enemy. They're like, what? You have raw religion? Why would you want to be bloody a Muslim, you know? You know, what's wrong with you? We used to go out, we used to do all this, and now you change all of a sudden. You know, I can respect you for choosing anything else, but why would you want to be a Muslim? 
I was like, man, why not be a Muslim? I go, what? What are you guys? You guys are Christians, right? Yeah? You guys practicing? No. I go, well, you know, had you practiced or if you told me something good about Christianity, maybe I would have been a Christian. And these guys, they got the shits with me, right? And these guys, they were my very, very close friends, right? I've known them, I've known them ever since I was young, and it hurt me dearly. And that brings back to that fortune teller. I was like, oh, shit, you know, what that guy said was true. I was like, so what? You hate me because I just, because I'm a Muslim. He goes, yeah, mate, I don't ever want to see you again. So I went paid of, that was only one or two, and then I went to some of my other friends' house to visit their parents and all that. And then, you know, words got around that I was Muslim, and their parents were pretty much, you know, grilling the shit out of me. Instead of me coming in to say hello, it turned out to be a religious debate. I was like, whoa, well, man, you know, I didn't come here for a religious debate. I come here to say hello because I haven't seen you for a while. So they pretty much shunned me. All the Muslims that I wasn't really close with before I was not Muslim, now they're pretty much turned into my best friends. And all the non-Muslims who used to be my best friends, or you know, I used to thought it was my best friends, now they're pretty much my worst enemies. And so I pretty much all dropped them. So yeah, that was in, um, so I converted when I was, or reverted, when I was 21, so I think that would have been 2000 and, uh, three or so. Yeah, it would have been probably around 2003. Yeah, roughly around there. And uh, that's pretty much about it. Alright, thanks, John. Thanks for your story. No worries, mate.